Open AI. Open AI. Open AI. AI generated. It's kind of full steam ahead for automating all of the all of the, the problems are going to get much worse. The AI clone of your voice. It's still infuriating. They didn't stop to think if we really should. should. AI has a problem. Since its latest mainstream debut in 2021, the public discourse and most large language models center around one thing, generation. Models like ChatGPT, Gemini, and Copilot use massive databases of text and data to train neural networks, and models like Dolly, Midjourney, and Stable Diffusion do similar processes with photo and video. The goal for all of these is to create, to mimic human speech, text, and imagery. And if you ask Twitter tech bros, they'll give you threads full of use cases. But these models have a pretty obvious downside. Microsoft replaced editors with AI. I am the real Joanna. I am the real Joanna. I am the real Joanna. The deep fake of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky appearing to tell his soldiers to surrender was widely shared online before the uploads were taken down. If this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. Fictitious information that came from Gemini and comes from other models. Warning us about the extreme risks of rushed AI. Bad actors will deliberately use these things to misinform people. So when Apple enters the mix this year with Apple Intelligence, they have the chance to do things differently. It was always about pursuing it in a thoughtful kind of way. They know that AI has a dark side, and blindly implementing it could backfire. Look no further than Google AI telling people to eat rocks, or schools in turmoil over AI-generated essays. So how can Apple pull this off? Well, by focusing on a totally different vision for AI. And I'll give you a hint, it's hardware is a big factor. So today, let's discuss what sets Apple intelligence apart, what gives it strength, and where it could all go horribly wrong. Right after a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by 70My and their new A810 dash cam with HDR support. Powered by a Sony sensor and supporting 4K HDR, this thing is seriously impressive. It features a large 3-inch LCD display for ease of use, a 150-degree FOV, and a 1080p internal or rear-facing camera, so you can rest assured that your car is protected at all times. And a built-in G-Force sensor detects any unusual movements and will automatically save clips while driving or while parked. And those clips are automatically stored in a separate folder on the SD card for easy access. Plus, it's super easy to install. With 3M adhesive and a simple clip mechanism, you won't have to worry about this thing going anywhere. And it's super easy to run a wire through the headliner of your car to plug it in. So you really get the best of both worlds. It's super easy to install and the picture quality is fantastic, making it easy to read license plates in the event that you might need to. And thanks to an ultra-wide f1.8 aperture, A810 is superb for nighttime driving. This guy can save you a ton of money from false insurance claims, hit and runs, vandalism, and more. I always make sure that I have a dash cam in my car, so this just replaced the much worse one that I had previously. So if you want to learn more about 70My and purchase the A810, check out the link in the description below. And now let's get back to the video. Apple's first foray into AI was Siri back in 2011, and it has stayed true to that vision ever since. What we really want to do is just talk to our device, ask a simple question. What's the weather going to be like today? And get a response. But in recent years and with the rapid advancement of AI models, Siri has seemed woefully out of date and antiquated. But at its core, the goal is clear. Siri is meant to help. I'm in the mood for sushi. I'm not sure what you said. I'm sorry. No worries. Or at least try. Apple doesn't want to write your essay, paint your art project, or tell you how to start a side hustle. It's there to assist and supplement whatever you're doing. With Apple intelligence, that same principle could reshape the very way we look at AI. I think it's becoming clear that for many people, chatbots and generators aren't going to change the game. And that's because they simply can't replicate human creativity. Sure, you can use them to write a script or generate images for your Willy Wonka experience scam, but whenever companies try to outsource to AI, the results are fairly predictable. I was very excited, and then I, I received the script. The reaction to the event itself 
understandably, people are outraged. With Apple intelligence, Apple has cemented their focus on the user experience. In the beginning and throughout almost everything that we always do, we always talk about the benefit to the user. That means letting the AI work in the background to accelerate your productivity. But what's changing now is Apple's willingness to let generative AI models out of the cage. It became clear uh, that people wanted to know our views on on generative AI in particular. And that's where Apple is towing a delicate line. There's a lot of benefits to rolling out Apple intelligence across an existing ecosystem of devices. It allows Apple to build personal intelligence because these are the devices where people spend 99% of their time and they can just instantaneously gain access to all that information. So giving a smart generative intelligence model access to that has a lot of benefits. See, I personally don't have much interest in generating a video script outline or making my own stock photos and videos with AI tools. I don't want AI to replace my creativity so that I can sit around and check emails all day. That's not fun. And that's why Apple Intelligence's delicate balance works in our favor. Apple showed some pretty powerful looking examples such as pulling from on-screen information to update contacts, cross-referencing texts and email attachments to determine the best time to leave for an event, and even searching within the content of photos and videos for specific people. This is what you can do when you have AI with the right hardware. You've got a Mac, an iPhone, and an iPad on an integrated system of chips that can run this computational power on device and give you access to those types of tools. And of course, the other benefit of running all of this on device is that Apple can create a semantic index with all of this extremely personal information without sending it to a cloud. So while Apple is not the first company to try to combine AI and hardware, they are the first that are promising to do this locally. Hardware-based AI products from Humane and Rabbit have tried to capture some of what Apple is promising, but processing everything in the cloud means, one, they're useless without an internet connection, and they can be painfully slow with one. Look and tell me what this is. Or I'll just do this, I guess. Ah. It's a Cybertruck. Photo is of a Cybertruck. And when Apple does need to outsource information to the cloud, their entirely new Apple Silicon based servers are specifically designed to minimize the amount of data that has to be shared. And this is a massive achievement since back in the early days of Siri, not even a simple voice dictation could be done in the cloud. When you're done with your passage, you tap done, sends it up to our server, and in a blink of an eye, it comes back with your text. You were basically recording an audio file, uploading it to iCloud, processing it, and downloading the text onto your phone. This is so much more private and so much more secure. However, I mentioned that Apple is working on a delicate balance here, and that's because, well, some of Apple intelligence looks a little weird. You can create an image of them surrounded by cake. You can send an image of her in a superhero cape. Honestly, the image generation aspect of Apple intelligence has drawn quite a bit of criticism because it's weird. There was a time where AI images were impressive, but let's be honest, most people now find them cringe. And so it was a little weird to see Apple lean into that with their new image playground. I mean, they seem fairly innocuous, but this is just a weird direction for Apple to be devoting so much time to, especially given the other much more powerful features of Apple intelligence. But by far the biggest concern that I have is that it's all kind of hypothetical right now. The beta is launching this fall and everything that Apple announced in the keynote looks fantastic, but they don't have the biggest track record when it comes to AI. And I definitely had some moments when writing this video where I wondered, is this actually going to work? Like, it's one thing to be able to pull up a dinner reservation that was confirmed over text, but it's another thing to be able to do multi-part questions, such as asking if it can read a brief that was sent to me by a brand in an email, and then tell me what I said about that brief to someone else, right? 
How can it handle multifaceted requests that are deeper than dinner reservations, flight logs, and contact info? But overall, I am optimistic. I think Apple is a company that is probably the best positioned to do something like this. They have this massive network of devices that have the capability of creating this ground up AI system that could very possibly just work right out of the box. Definitely let me know what your guys' thoughts are on Apple Intelligence. I would love to hear if you are optimistic, pessimistic, or somewhere in between. And of course, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. We're gonna be covering all of this stuff when it comes out later this year, so you won't want to miss it. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one.